A couple weeks ago, I received an email from Thomas in Belgium. Thomas asked, did you ever experience the differences and equalities in USA versus Euro hunting culture? A lot of people here find this topic super interesting. Well, in this video, I intend to answer Thomas's question to the best of my ability. I've hunted and fished with Europeans frequently in my life, you know, particularly German hunters, which seem to be the most well-traveled of the European hunters. I found that most European hunters are actually fascinated by American hunters for some odd reason. Um, I'm always inundated with questions from European hunters about rifles, bullets, cartridges, and they seem to be pretty fascinated by North American game animals as well. And, you know, it's just hard for them to fathom the fact that Americans can just go down to the store, buy a rifle, get a hunting license, and be hunting the next day. Several years ago in hunting camp, I had another hunter from Germany named Hans, and he asked me if I felt that American hunters lacked skill. You know, his reasoning behind the question revolved around the fact that he had to go through extensive training and testing to receive his hunting license in Germany, yet Americans just take a simple one-day class and receive their hunting license. He was a little condescending in his delivery of the question, but... It was a fair question nonetheless. It's true that extensive training and testing is involved in getting a hunting license in many European countries compared to the one-day hunter safety course that we take in most of the United States. But you have to put this training in perspective. Most American hunters don't need to learn about guns. You know, we were raised shooting them, and most of us owned our first hunting rifle before we were in our teenage years. I mean, I had my first hunting rifle at the age of 10, and that was a 30 6 In America, we can just grab our guns, go up in the hills or out in the desert, and practice shooting our guns whenever we want. We don't need permits or permission to shoot our guns, and practicing with them is perfectly legal on most public land in America. In Europe... Most people have to join gun clubs in order to practice, and there's little to no public land to practice on. So Europeans really don't have a lot of opportunities to practice or recreationally shoot like we do here in America. Most American hunters don't require classes on marksmanship and hunting skills. Most of us were already taught those things when we were very young, and if not, you can learn them whenever you want. Also, most Americans don't have an irrational fear of firearms, so becoming familiar with them was never a cultural issue. This is why Americans easily transition into military and law enforcement roles. By contrast, many Europeans trying to obtain their hunting licenses aren't as familiar with firearms and many of them have never hunted prior to obtaining their license. So they need to be taught how to hunt and how to use a firearm generally. Not all Europeans, but the vast majority of them. The training that Europeans receive is a necessary element of their environment, you know, which is an environment where firearm use is considered a special privilege. But one aspect where European hunters do tend to be more skilled than American hunters, is at taking running shots on game animals, mainly due to their propensity for driven hunts. Uh, Americans are probably better shots from a uh, fixed position, but Europeans do tend to be better shots on running game than American hunters. North American hunters aren't unethical as a whole. You know, yeah, there's a few bad apples in the bunch, but those people are a very small minority of our enormous hunting population here in America. To put it into perspective, the United States has two times more hunters than Europe does, yet 
has half the population of Europe. Unfortunately, our leftist media in America will go out of their way to find one unethical hunter and paint millions more hunters with the same brush. Unethical hunters are definitely looked down upon by the overwhelming majority of American hunters. Unethical hunting behaviors are not encouraged or accepted in America by the hunting community. So don't believe our media's portrayal of hunters and gun owners. I guess the only thing that bothers me with ethics of American hunters is their infatuation with antler and horn size. Europeans tend to disregard the score of an animal and look for an older, mature animal with lots of great character. Europeans definitely tend to be more ethical in this regard, and I applaud them for it. I think what rubs European hunters the wrong way is that North American hunters focus more on gear and getting a freezer full of meat than they do on the actual traditions of the hunt. European hunters bring meaning to a hunt in ways that North Americans just can't grasp. A European hunt is packed with ritual and tradition to honor the animals, pay tribute to the hunt, and to congratulate the hunter. The symbolism and use of a simple branch from a tree connects man to nature and cements a culture of utmost respect for the animal. In America, hunters who practice rituals are actually very few. When Americans do perform a ritual, it's usually some type of rite of passage ritual for a first time hunter after their first kill. This is normally just a simple smear of blood on the face. The blood smear ritual goes back 1,200 years ago to Europe in the tradition of St. Hubert. Later, English fox hunters would put a smear of fox blood on the face of a first-time hunter. These English fox hunters brought the tradition to the United States in the 17th century, and American hunters have practiced the ritual ever since. Even the Predator character in the movie Alien vs. Predator marked their face with alien blood after their first kills. The other and less common rite of passage ritual seen in the United States is the consuming ritual, which is basically taking a bite out of the heart or liver of your first kill. You know, it's still practiced as an initiation ritual among a few American hunters but this practice really is rare. This ritual makes absolutely no sense though, as there aren't any organ eating rituals to draw from. I mean, Native Americans often ate the hearts and livers of fresh kills for, you know, for practicality and for enjoyment, not as a ritual. You know, Native Americans didn't have refrigerators. So when they started butchering the buffalo on the plains on a hot 90 degree day, the organs would spoil quickly if they didn't consume them immediately. So Native Americans would eat the organs of a fresh kill because they didn't want it to go to waste and probably because they enjoyed it and thought it tasted good. They didn't do it as part of any ritual or rite of passage like a lot of people think. I will say that Many, in many American hunting camps, you know, it is common to tell the new guy that eating, taking a bite of the heart or the liver is a ritual, just to see if they'll actually do it, you know, and then laugh at them if they actually do do it. You know, this practice has no history of significance, and it's actually pretty gross if you ask me. I think it was more popularized by Hollywood movies than anything else. Blood drinking is also sometimes seen by North American hunters as a rite of passage, but it's also very rare. Many indigenous cultures throughout the world did drink the blood of their kills, including some Native American tribes on the plains. At some level, blood is commonly thought to have a spiritual significance of binding living things together. Before humans knew about genes and strands of DNA, 
our ancestors knew about the significance of blood and how traits were passed down through it. In this sense, when drinking the blood of your kill, the essence of your kill is now in you. You really didn't see this ritual a lot among American hunters until the movie Red Dawn came out in 1984. So it's also a pretty gross practice in my opinion, and you won't see me doing it. So a very small percentage of American hunters will actually practice a rite of passage ritual for new hunters, but you know, these rituals do happen. Most Europeans, by contrast, view rituals as an integral part of the hunt. What most Americans don't realize is that Europe is an extremely diverse place with many different hunting cultures within the same continent. Rituals that German hunters perform aren't the same as what you'll see in southern France, you know, and when you go to the UK, you suddenly aren't hunting anymore, you're stalking now. You know, and I really doubt, you know, somebody in the highlands of Scotland hunting is going to have much in common with a hunter down in the Balkans. So you have to realize that Europe itself is an extremely diverse place. And just because you study up on uh, the German or Austrian hunting culture or the French hunting culture, it doesn't mean it applies to every country in Europe. And, you know, let's get back to the extensive training that Europeans go through to get their hunting license. And the process of learning how to hunt and use a rifle in these classes, Europeans are also taught the rituals and traditions of their own hunting culture. So their hunting culture is actually institutionally taught behavior. To understand the North American hunter, you must realize that we're mostly solitary hunters, often alone in the wilderness or maybe hunting with one other person at most. We put our packs on and go out in the wilderness to hunt, I mean, sometimes for days. By contrast, Europeans most often hunt in groups, often in what's called a driven hunt. European hunters who hunt in groups often adhere and pass down rituals between each other because others are present there with them to see and perform the rituals. So naturally, these rituals live on amongst hunters in Europe. The lone American hunter who shoots a sheep in the Alaskan wilderness five days from civilization isn't really concerned with performing a ceremony. He just wants to pack the animal back to camp before the sun goes down and the grizzly bears come out. And what a lot of cultures around the world don't understand about Americans is that we're very individualistic people. You know, so we like to get things done on our own without anyone else's help, you know, or anyone else to screw things up for us either. You know, we, we like personal accountability and responsibility and the feeling of gratification that comes from that. Europeans tend to have more of a collective mentality and have cultural attributes that favor working in groups. Because of this, European hunters tend to get caught up in the camaraderie, pageantry, and achievement of the hunt more than the act of hunting itself sometimes. Americans tend to just focus on the hunt itself and being successful. While it's true that a few uppity Americans do get caught up in the process of getting awards from organizations like SCI or being placed in record books, 99% of American hunters just enjoy the simple satisfaction of going out on their own, locating, tracking, killing, butchering, cooking, and consuming their own food. That's how American hunters connect with the cycle of nature, at a carnal level rather than a symbolic one. The United States manages its wildlife resources very successfully. Actually, you know, it's hard, kind of hard for Europeans to believe, but we actually manage our wildlife resources better than many places in Europe. You know, having a lot of hunters in America is a good thing because all the hunting revenues here go to conservation. 
You know, American sportsmen generate billions of dollars for the preservation of fish and game in our country. Modern America is a gold standard model for game conservation. We have more deer in America today than when Columbus landed in 1492. And our forest land has been increasing in size for the last 60 years. Currently, even predators like mountain lions, coyotes, gray wolves, and black bears are experiencing population explosions right now. Our hunting revenues are actually increasing wildlife habitat, even though our human population is increasing at the same time. In North America, the vast majority of land is wild spaces. You can hunt extensively in any state or province in the United States and Canada. I can hunt on pieces of land where humans probably never stepped foot before. By contrast, in Europe, thousands of years of development have left wild places few and far between. So hunting opportunities are limited there. Well, unless you're Scandinavian, you know, uh, Scandinavia is like the Canada of Europe. Europe's huge population density makes conservation harder than it is in North America. So naturally, Europeans have to be extra vigilant and creative in their conservation efforts than we do in North America. Europeans do a great job of managing the truly wild public areas left. You know, Europeans have succeeded in saving the red deer from the brink and manage a good, healthy population today. In reality, both American and European hunters are great conservationists. It's just more, a more difficult task in Europe because they lack the land and the monetary resources for conservation that American hunters enjoy. You know, if you look at the conservation management plans in different country, the way America, and to a certain extent also Canada, manage our wild game is we, we manage it as a public resource where property owners don't own wildlife. The, the people own the wildlife, the public own it. And we found a way to uh, successfully manage wildlife within that system. Unlike a lot of Europe and most of Africa, where uh, private property owners actually own the animals on their land. You know, it's, it's two different systems that take two different philosophies to address. Having hunted all over the world, I have to say that Americans often take hunting for granted because it's so easy to buy a rifle, get a hunting license, and hunt close to home on an endless amount of public land. Americans' view of hunting is that hunting is our right. And, you know, Americans will vigorously fight any attempts by overbearing government officials to take that right away. Europeans, on the other hand, are forced to see hunting as a precious privilege only granted to a select few people. I mean, look at Europe's history, and you'll see that hunting was an activity usually reserved for nobility and the rich elite. So Europeans have been conditioned over thousands of years to view hunting as a privilege only granted to a worthy few rather than a right granted to free citizens. In essence, this mentality might be the biggest difference between European and Americans as a whole. Another major difference is that hunters in Europe carry a prominence that you don't see here in America. European hunters are taught ritualistic traditions from the moment they leave hunting school. So naturally, these rituals and traditions are an important and integral part of European hunting. Many European hunters even expect a certain etiquette and dress code during the hunt. By contrast, American hunters tend to just wear whatever's warm, comfortable, or available and go out hunting without a second thought about traditions or rituals or dress codes or anything like that. In the end, Anti-hunting leftists are the real threat to hunting, 
both in Europe and in North America. The leftists are rewriting the narrative on hunting as something evil. You see, hunting is the epitome of freedom and self-reliance, and communists will do anything they can to prevent freedom and self-reliance. Hunters all over the world should realize that we're all brothers and sisters and that we have one common enemy, which is the leftists that are insistent on controlling every aspect of our lives and limiting our freedoms. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video discussion and that uh, Thomas from Belgium had his question answered adequately. And as always, thanks for watching and vibe on tile.